today on Motors, Chris is going to show you how to upgrade the cooling and suspension systems on Project Black Mamba. Presented by Amp Research. Hey, welcome to Motors. Today we're getting started on our newest project vehicle, an 87 Mustang GT, and we're calling it Project Black Mamba. Now you're probably wondering why we're calling it that, because it's obviously gray. Well, up until a couple of weeks ago, it was its original factory black color, but the paint was in such bad shape and we wanted it to look better on camera, so we rattle canned it gray. Now we've got a lot planned for this old Mustang, but to get started and improve its drivability, we're installing a new electric fan and radiator kit from Flexalite, some new rear suspension components from BMR Suspension, as well as some Helwig sway bars. Now let's pop the hood and get started. Now for this job, you're gonna need a right angle grinder, some zip ties, electrical tape, some wire strippers and crimpers, some thread sealant, a torque wrench, a breaker bar, a Dremel tool, a cordless drill, some drill bits, and a MIG welder, as well as some common tools that Olivia's got. What you got? We're gonna need some diagonal cutters, a crescent wrench, screwdrivers, nut drivers, pliers, various wrenches, a ratchet, some extensions and sockets, disposable gloves, some safety glasses, work gloves, and for this project, you're gonna need some earplugs for all that grinding. Yeah, because this thing gets pretty loud, guys. Oh yeah. It just never ends with you. I feel like if it's not one thing, it's another. Well, that ends today. The Craftsman C3 line. One battery, more than 30 tools, and the power to tackle any job that stands in your way. You're welcome. The C3 line from Craftsman. Get the new, more powerful XCP battery. Now runs up to four times longer. Craftsman, trust in your hands. Today I'm gonna to show you how to upgrade the rear suspension of our 87 Mustang GT Project Black Mamba with parts provided by BMR Suspension. We've got replacement upper and lower control arms and new subframe connectors with seat supports. Our replacement upper control arms are adjustable and also have spherical rod ends. The lower control arms also have spherical rod ends instead of rubber bushings, which eliminates flex that rubber bushings normally have, but still allow normal suspension travel. We've got the back end of our Mustang jacked up, and we're using four jack stands, two under the frame and two to support the rear axle, and of course we've removed both of our wheels. Now we've got to remove our rear sway bar, the shocks, the upper and lower control arms and springs, and we also had to remove the mufflers in order to get access to some of those bolts for that lower control arm. Now let's get to that rear sway bar. Now remember, before you jack up your vehicle, you want to chalk your tires. We use two chocks per tire. Another safety tip is once you've removed that wheel, put it underneath the frame. So if the vehicle does happen to fall, it's going to fall on that tire first. To remove your factory sway bar, you've got a total of four bolts to remove, two on each side. For that, you're going to need a 15 millimeter box wrench and a 15 millimeter socket. The spherical rod end bushings need to be greased prior to installation. As you can see, there's quite a bit of difference between our factory control arms and our new ones from BMR. 
For starters, our new upper control arm is adjustable. Now we've set this to match the length of the factory one. Also, our bushings are in pretty bad shape. Now those are going to be replaced by these new spherical rod ends, which are much more rigid. Now let's bolt these things on in there. If you've got everything installed, you want to make sure that you torque everything down. Now, according to our repair manual, there's a certain range of torque for all of these bolts. We chose the middle of that range, which for our upper and lower control arms is 90 foot-pounds, for our shock it's 60, and for our sway bars it's 35. There's a few things to keep in mind when installing the BMR control arms. Try not to put too much stress on that brake line, and it's a good idea to have a buddy helping you out because some of those bolts can be a little bit difficult to get back in. Now the offset of the sway bar bracket goes toward the outside of the vehicle, and due to the more rigid suspension, well, we don't need to reinstall our quad shocks. Now let's get on to our subframe connectors. Loosely bolt in the seat support bracket so you can move it to line up the subframe connector. Align your subframe connector to the correct positions and then mark the frame so you know where to sand and prep for welding. Now sand off all the powder coating at all the points on the subframe connector where you're going to be welding. Now don't worry, the instructions are going to show you all of the weld points. Now use a jack to support the subframe connector against the vehicle. Just some light pressure will do for now. And then it's time to break out your MIG welder and get to work. Now you can always refer to our old Season 2 episode at our website on learning how to weld. Now that we're done installing our subframe connectors and control arms from BMR, we decided to take our suspension upgrade one step further with a new set of Helwig sway bars. One of the easiest aftermarket products you can install to improve handling is a set of Helwig sway bars. Now if you need any help on installing these on a late model Mustang or an F-150, just head on over to our website for the full episodes on the step-by-step. -step. The rear Helwig sway bar includes spacers, which would normally go inside the factory lower control arm. But since we've got this aftermarket one from BMR, it actually goes on the inside here between the control arm and the sway bar. To remove the sway bar off the front of your Mustang, you're going to need a 13 millimeter deep socket, ratchet, and extension. Now if that plastic nut plate on the top of those sway bar bolts is broken like it was on both of ours, you're also going to need a 5 8 wrench to keep it from turning around. After lubing up your bushings, reuse your factory brackets and mount it up to the vehicle using the factory bolts. Now when we come back from our break, we'll install that electric fan and radiator kit from Flexalight. Hey, welcome back to Motors. The electric fan and radiator kit from Flexlight comes with everything that you need for installation. Of course, you've got your fan and radiator assembly, the radiator cap, wiring, hardware, brackets, a coolant reservoir, fan control and thermostat, some additive, and the only thing that you're going to need to buy is some new coolant. 
Now the first thing that we're going to do is drain out our old coolant. Since we'll be working with the electrical system on our Mustang, we've got to disconnect the positive battery terminal with our Craftsman half inch wrench. But the terminals are so heavily corroded, we're also going to clean them up with a battery terminal cleaner tool as well as a battery cleaner spray. With our power disconnected, we can get started by draining out our old fluid. And since we'll be replacing both our upper and lower radiator hoses, we're going to remove those and then pop out our radiator. We had to bend this factory tab down in order to give us clearance to drop in the new radiator. <laughs> Mount the coolant reservoir using the supplied bracket to the fill cap side of the radiator. This bracket just slides on into that track and then you bolt this to it. You want your reservoir to be just below the top of the radiator, or it can also be level with that fill cap. We're going to go ahead and extend our wiring using the supplied wire and butt connectors. Attach the supplied hose and clamp to the short tube on the bottom of the fluid reservoir. Now we've got our coolant reservoir and our wiring and hose routed up to the top so it'll make it easier for installation later, we can mount the completed assembly. Apply thread seal to the fitting and install it on the filler neck. Using a 1364 drill bit, we've drilled some holes so that we can mount our fan control box. Now we can hook up our wires, mount the control box, and then insert this temperature probe into the radiator. And finally, we'll add our coolant and FlexLite's own coolant additive called FlexiChill, which helps prevent scale and blockage and reduces engine temperature by up to 20 degrees Fahrenheit. by Craftsman at Sears. Hey, do you own a hybrid? And did you know that our friends over at Craftsman make one? Well, they do, and it's right here on my workbench. Of course, I'm not talking about a hybrid vehicle, but rather their new hybrid ratcheting wrench set. The seven-piece set comes in both standard and metric. Now, while it may look like a normal Craftsman wrench, it isn't because it has a built-in ratcheting feature. Each wrench has the standard box end, but if you look closely at the inside of the open end of the wrench, you'll see where all the magic takes place. And check out how easy this thing is to use. 
Now, just like other Craftsman ratcheting wrenches, you get the speed and convenience of turning those nuts and bolts without removing the wrench from the fastener. Now, this metric set contains sizes 8mm through 17mm, while the standard set contains sizes 5 16 through 11 16 of an inch. And as always, it comes with that fantastic Craftsman lifetime warranty. Now, upgrade your existing wrench set to this awesome hybrid set today by visiting your local Sears store or shopping online at sears.com slash tools. So you've just dumped a ton of cash in that brand new truck or SUV only to quickly realize that your dog or your little one is going to completely destroy that brand new interior of yours in no time flat. Well, what are you going to do, right? Well, you can take your chances, but if you're smart, you'll protect them with the seat saver seat protectors from Covercraft. Now, whether it's your kids spilling things, your pet dragging in dirt or shedding all over the place, or the result of you, yes, you and your weekend adventures tracking in who knows what, Covercraft's line of custom patterned seat covers is what you need. Now they're custom fitted so they look great, and in addition to keeping your seats looking like new, they also provide protection from those harsh UV rays. Now if they get dirty, they'll just pull them off and toss them in the washer. The material is a comfortable and breathable heavy duty poly cotton fabric that won't give you that strange sticky feeling like neoprene or vinyl seat covers will. They're also protected with a durable water repellent to block most accidents from reaching your factory seats. Now you can choose from three different fabrics and 14 different colors and patterns to complement your interior. Not only do they have common solid colors and a durable poly cotton drill fabric and a waterproof fabric, but they also have a true timber camo print with some really crazy patterns including pink camo. Now they're super easy to install and they don't require any tools. You just slip them on over your existing cloth or leather seats and it just takes a couple of minutes. Now here I am installing them on a GMC truck starting with the headrests, the seat backs and bottoms and finally the back seat. Now for more information on the seat saver and Covercraft's complete line of innovative products for the interior and exterior of your vehicle, head on over to Covercraft.com. Now you guys know Mickey Thompson for their wheels and tires for trucks, SUVs, and motorcycles from the drag strip and street to off-road. And now they've put their legendary tire technology into an incredible street tire for today's late model American muscle cars. Check these meats out. Now this is their new ultra high performance tire called Street Comp. Specifically designed for today's American muscle cars that have high horsepower and torque, these UHP street tires perform extremely well in a variety of conditions, both wet and dry. The Street Comp integrates Mickey Thompson's legendary race tire technology for great performance, incredible traction, handling, and ride comfort. They're available in 18 popular sizes and have a unique tread design. Now for more information, check out the parts page at our website or visit MickeyThompsonTires.com. When you're shopping for performance parts online, there are so many different places to choose from, but you just don't know who's actually going to deliver on time, give you competitive prices, and offer the kind of customer service that will keep you coming back. Well, if you're looking for those go-fast parts, you should definitely check out performanceparts.com. They have the best parts that you need for your automotive performance all in one place. Now, they know their stuff too, since they've been selling performance parts and automotive accessories since the 60s. They've also got the brands you trust, the products you need, and have extensive automotive performance experience to provide you with expert service before, during, and after each sale. They also buy direct from the factory so they can handle any warranty and service needs that you might have, and with 23 shipping locations in the U.S. and Canada, parts arrive fast. And make Performance Parts your favorite online parts store. They've got the performance parts that you need for the power you want. Now check them out at performanceparts.com. E3 Diamond Fire Spark Plugs are the most powerful spark plugs you can buy. They deliver a more complete fuel burn, more power, better economy, and reduced emissions. E3 Diamond Fire Spark Plugs at auto parts and lawn and garden stores everywhere. Letters, brought to you by E3 Spark Plugs. Born to burn. Hey, now it's time for letters. Now I want to remind you to like us at facebook.com slash motors TV and to follow us at twitter.com slash motors. And also check out our website at motors.tv where we've got a rides button right there on the homepage. Click that and you can enter to win a cover from Covercraft by just sending us pictures of your ride to have it featured on our Facebook page. Now let's get to our first letter. This letter comes from Drake. He says, hey Chris, love the show. 
I found it while looking for car shows through my smart TV apps and then subscribed to your podcast and iTunes to watch all of the seasons. I really like how you've stayed in your two-car garage using common hand tools. You have shown me that those big jobs are possible without taking my cars to the shop. Would you please do a show on changing the spark plugs on a 2005 Ford F-150? I think you might just happen to have one of those available. Mine is a 5.4 liter and has 140,000 miles. I have kept up with most of the maintenance myself. The only thing I have not done is change the plugs. That's right, 140,000 with original plugs. I've heard so many horror stories about changing the plugs on this truck that I've neglected to do it myself. I've been told that it can cost upwards of $400 to have it done at the shop, which is ridiculous for changing a set of plugs. The F-150 forums are all over the place with methods, so it would be great to see you do it on the air. Keep up the great work. Well, thanks for the letter, Drake. We are going to demonstrate the use of this tool right here uh, on our F-150 as well as our S-197 Mustang. They use the same plug. It's part number E3.70 from E3 Spark Plugs. We've got 16 of them right here that we've got to install. And the tool that we're going to use should we get into any trouble is this one right here. We picked it up from Sears. It's a Lyle and the part number is 65600. And that's exactly what it's for. It's a broken spark plug removal tool. So stay tuned. We're going to show you how to use this bad boy on our F-150 as well as our Mustang. Our next letter comes from Cole Helm. He's one of our Facebook fans. He says, hey Chris, which one of the Fords is your daily driver and what's the criteria for picking the parts you install in your project vehicles? Is it based on reviews, budget, other specifics, or just whichever company wants to give you their product for TV? Well, thanks for your letter, Cole. Now the 2005 F-150 is my daily driver. It's my third Ford truck. I wouldn't give that thing up for anything in the world outside of a Raptor. Are you listening for it? So as far as uh, the products that we feature on this show, well, it's just whatever we're gonna do to that project vehicle. We'll contact the manufacturer and see if they wanna play with us, or sometimes we have a manufacturer that contacts us and they become a sponsor, and then we gotta find a vehicle. So that's why sometimes we kinda go outside of our project vehicles and you might see another vehicle on the show. Thanks again, Cole. And our last letter today is from Anson Keller. He writes, can you recommend a Craftsman floor jack for lifting my 2005 GM Sierra? Thanks. Well, Anson, we use this bad boy right here. Part number 50244. It's a Craftsman Professional 3-ton aluminum floor jack. And what I really love about this thing is it's low profile on the front here. allows us to get it underneath any of our vehicles, even our lowered ones. It's lightweight, it's easy to move around, it gives us the height that we need, and it's easy to break down if we need to take it somewhere for traveling. So thanks for your question. You can check it out at Sears.com or head on over to your local Sears store and talk to those guys. Now I want to thank you for sending in your letter. You guys all get free E3 spark plugs for your vehicle. Now to find out if they're available for your vehicle or learn more about their diamond fire technology, just head on over to e3sparkplugs.com. Well, we've improved the drivability of this old Mustang by installing a new electric fan and radiator kit from FlexLite, some new rear suspension components from BMR Suspension, as well as some new Hellwig sway bars. Now these are all parts you can install yourself using basic hand tools with the exception of those subframe connectors that do require welding. So you might want to check out our old welding episode to get started with that. Now for more information on all the products featured in this episode, just head on over to our website. We'll catch you next time on Motors. Alrighty. We got this. Let's take three. Take three. That's all it's going to take. Third time's a job. Take four. We have this. Woo. Oh, I've improved. <laughs> Today on Motors, we're going to do a special on Furby. Yay! <laughs> Motor is for babies. <laughs> Today on Motors, Chris is going to show you how to upgrade cooling and suspension on Project Back in Mama. I'm on break. Don't bother me. We did what? 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 We did.